right. We will now proceed to the limits of rational functions. So these are rational functions because they are expressed as a ratio between two expressions. Now this one is as x approaches 3. Now the rule here, here is that you first plug in 3. If you get a, a constant value, that is already your limit. But if you get an undefined value, that means a, a number divided by 0 or uh, an, an indeterminate, that means 0 over 0, it means that you need some work to do, like factoring procedure to cancel out uh, the denominator because you can't afford to have an undefined value here. And then after that, plug in back. So let's go first with the first example. You have the limits of x squared minus 7x plus 12 as x is approaching positive 3. Now, this is still coming from the left and right since it doesn't say that it is a one-sided limit. So, the first thing is we, we plug in 3. Okay, and so you have here now is 9, okay, minus 21 plus 12, all over 0. So, this one is actually 0 over 0. We call this situation as indeterminate when you have 0 divided by 0. That means this expression is still factorable so that we can cancel out expressions. Now, remember that if you have x squared minus 7x plus 12, all right, this is the same as x minus 3 and x minus 4. So you have uh, factors of 12 whose sum is negative 7, and that could only be negative 3 and negative 4. And we will divide this by x minus 3, and, and that's our given, actually. And so, as you can see, we can cancel x minus 3. Now, we have a simplified version of our expression to be x minus 4. And then after that, we can plug in back to, to our equation. Since our x is 3, so this now becomes 3 minus 4. So our limit is negative 1. Okay, that means as x is approaching 3, okay, y is approaching negative 1 with that function. All right, next. The next one we have x squared minus 5x uh, over x minus 5, and our x is approaching positive 5. So you will have here 5 squared minus 5 times 5 all over 5 minus 5. Again, we will be getting an indeterminate in our expression. That means we can still factor this out. So you have x squared minus 5x over x minus 5. Now this is factorable by x. We call it a common factor. Since x is common to both, we can divide x to each expression. And what's left is x minus 5 all over x minus 5. And then we cancel it out. And our x now is 5. So therefore, as x is approaching 5, y is also approaching 5. Okay, next. The last one. Okay, so again, our function is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 all over x minus 3. And our x is approaching 3. So you have 2 times 3 squared minus 5 times 3 minus 3 all over x minus 3. All right? So you now have your 18 minus 15 minus 3 all over 0, which gives us also 0 over 0. Now, remember, even if I have a number here, okay, let's say I have 10 over 0, that's undefined. You still need to simplify your expression in order for you to find a limit. Now, it's also possible that your function is is your limit is undefined. When your limit is undefined after you have simplified your expression, then the limit is not existing, okay? Now, let's simplify the, the expression to x squared minus 5x minus 3 all over x minus 3. Then, of course, we can factor this by the AC method. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6, and then you have negative 5 in here. So the factors of negative 6 that gives out a sum of negative 5 is negative 6 and positive 1. But of course, we still need to divide by 2 because that's the rule. And so therefore, our factors are 2x plus 1. And your 2 will be in the front of x. And then x minus 3. Okay, most often than not, you can cancel the denominator actually when you factor out the expression. All you need to do is to find the second factor if 
you're trying to place mark that's how it is oops and then all over x minus 3 and so what we can do is to cancel out x minus 3 and what's left of our equation is 2x plus 1 but because we know that x is approaching 3 we can place 3 in place of x and so therefore it gives us 7 therefore when x is approaching 3 our y is approaching 7 okay